Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, GitLab. This is uh, the 12-8 retrospective. Uh, my name is Christopher Luffeltz. I'm the Senior Director of Development, and I'll be your MC for this retro. Uh, our goal is to get through the content in uh, roughly 25 minutes, so please uh, keep that in mind as you're uh, giving your updates. Uh, in particular, I'd like to highlight that we have uh, changed the uh, um, changed the uh, format a little bit to see how this goes. Uh, in the spirit of experimentation and continuous improvement, uh, we wanted to see if we could make a more collaborative and also uh, more um, uh, voice, more voices to be heard, uh, but while keeping to the 25-minute uh, goal of uh, overall um, meeting time. Um, so if you'd like, there's a highlight uh, for the MR at the top there that's been merged, and uh, we'll proceed to talk about that. So uh, first item up on the list is uh, previous retro retrospective uh, improvement tasks. Uh, John is not on the call, so I'll, I'll uh, basically verbalize his. Uh, we've uh, implemented a pilot for domain experts to see how that goes. Assuming that things go well, we're going to have a formal proposal in April. Uh, basically, we want to see how the different pieces of that work. Uh, we've also performed a code survey. Uh, code review survey, I should say, uh, which uh, the results are also posted there, and we'll look at those to see how potential improvements will happen. Uh, Nick, are you on the call to verbalize your piece of this effort? Yes. Um, yeah, so there's an issue to measure and report on review times, and so uh, within the last month, uh, we've worked with engineering productivity and the data team to um, better account for weekends in the days from reviewer assignment to uh, review metric. Um, and then uh, I also created a proof of concept for metrics um, around uh, the usage of reviewer roulette recommendations. And so the next steps there are gathering feedback and, uh, and just refining um, that, uh, uh, refining those metrics. Excellent. And Darva, how about for your item? All right. So I'm working with John on improving the code review efficiency, and I'm working on developing code review training. And I created an epic for that where I will track all of the code review training, as well as I have a few examples of a video that I created, as well as an assessment. So please review and comment, as well as there's an issue down here that I'm taking, where I'm taking suggestions on different ideas for code review training courses. And that's all I have. Thanks, Darvin. I appreciate it. And I uh, really appreciate all the efforts that everybody's putting into that uh, particular um, action item. Uh, Mech, uh, you're up next. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so uh, just to recap, we took up two improvement items from the last release. One is to audit the tests for two APA recovery. We made some progress here by identifying a test, but it needs to be um, uh, looked into deeper with the current SETs on, on access and import. Um, there's some challenges with our two SETs who are assigned to this are also working on the other uh, working groups, uh, which is high visibility. So we will still continue to work on this um, in the next uh, uh, in the next action items, the next release. The second one is the, to enable the test to lock in with the back end. Um, we've started working on this, but there's some challenges that our SETs do not know this code well. So we're reaching out for more a more deeper pairing programming with the engineers in uh, the access group. Um, that's the current status as of now. I'll, I'll pass it back to you, Christopher, for the next um, Thanks, Mick. Well. Uh, this next item is a good example where we are uh, not verbalizing it. We're going to just keep moving forward so we can get to uh, open discussion. Um, Lindsay, uh, are you available to talk about the defend effort? Sure. Effort improvement? So part of our feedback in 12.8 was that we'd like to work with our PMs closer to break issues into smaller deliverable slices of technology that were more clearly defined. So in 12.9, we've introduced weekly group-wide synchronous meetings where we approach planning breakdown as a team. This has uh, resulted in what I believe is more clear deliverables for 12.10, but it's had a bit of a side effect in ensuring that the asynchronous conversations that happen um, are in a logical central location for the team that's easy to find. So it's an improvement, but we've still got to work on it. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, that's a good way to iterate is, is to make sure that just get some improvements done and then kind of move forward. Uh, Michelle, are you, you're up next. Uh, you got any updates for us around feature flags? Yeah, um, I think that improving the visibility of feature flags is sort of coming to a close at this point. Um, and the issue, there were several suggested action items to be taken, and some of those were deemed unnecessary. So the first one is 
We wanted to modify the issue template because our process has changed to include feature flag information in the issue template. And we decided against that. There's a link there on why. Um, the second thing is, did you know that there is a feature flag rollout template because it's incredibly useful. This is a standardized way to track the removal of a feature flag so you don't forget about it. Um, and then the one last change, there's an MR open. I would love feedback on it. There's already a few suggestions on there um, to have DangerBot suggest adding the feature flag label so we can pay attention to that. It's not a, it's not a foolproof method. Um, so we really need to consider if that's a direction we wanna move in. So any feedback is welcome there. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, there's a good, some additional items that uh, we're not gonna verbalize, uh, but please read through those. Um, we're going to quickly move into the what went well section. Uh, just FYI, there was a lot of things that went well this uh, month. If you look down in the lower section, uh, I edited this down uh, mainly because we focus on the things that we can improve in the discussions around those. So don't treat it as uh, we did less well this month. We actually did great in a number of areas. But I did want to verbalize a few highlights. Uh, Mac, you want to do the first one? Sure. Uh, so the the quad planning has been uh, uh, coming to fruition. I think we've engaged, um, we have more engagement with the counterpart teams with our SCT, so that's been great. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if we want to focus on uh, verbalize the next one, Christopher. Should I take on quality? Uh, yeah, you can uh, go ahead and start that one up as okay. well. Sure. And the, the new master broken triage and resolution has led to a reduction of uh, mean time to resolve a master broken issues. Thanks to the EP team for leading this. Uh, the Periscope chart is there for you to take a look. And the last one is um, we have we have detected performance improvements across the board. So thank you, everybody, for contributing to uh, better performance overall. And then um, there are a few uh, items here listed by Grant on the endpoints that have been improved significantly. So thank you, um, everybody, who helped out here. Yeah, the, just to call out the API improvements are super exciting. Um, it's uh, definitely an example of where we need to improve. Uh, Stan in uh, yesterday's infrastructure and availability meeting uh, mentioned the fact that uh, we still have a lot of areas that we need to look at and focus on. So we're going to take an action from that uh, for folks that have interest in learning about uh, infrastructure and availability issues uh, between uh, infrastructure and development. Uh, please let us know because we can add you to that meeting as well as a shout out. Uh, uh, Nick, uh, do you want to talk about what's going on in the ecosystem and iteration office hours? Sure. Yeah, we, we took some inspiration from SID's uh, iteration office hours and um, held one with, um, with ecosystem engineering and, and product team members. Uh, so on, on this call, we focused on breaking down our uh, mass integrations epic and also planned the transition from uh, service templates to instance level integration, which is part of that epic. Um, and yeah, multiple participants in the call highlighted uh, its usefulness in, in our retro issue. Are you planning to continue those? Yeah, I think what we decided, uh, we sort of asked, uh, should we do these regularly and, or should we just kind of do them as needed? And I think the team just agreed, let's, let's do them as needed when, they're, uh, when we find that there's a epic or like a sub epic that, that we feel needs uh, breaking down synchronously. And uh, not intending to put you on the spot, but uh, have you updated the handbook to reflect uh, said ad hoc uh, suggestions? Have not, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> so it might be good to update the handbook to kind of reflect that. I think this is a good one where uh, it'd be useful for us to do it, especially for handbook first, uh, our hand for handbook first process. Cool. Uh, we'll move on to results. Uh, the other one, uh, Craig, uh, if you can verbalize uh, the impactful features that we've added, and then uh, we can jump straight into the next one since you have the one on, the one on what went wrong. Sure. Um, yeah, so across enablement, several impactful features were shipped from the, ena from the enablement section. Sorry, repeating. Uh, search team enabled advanced global search for six customers this month, and Puma was enabled on gitlab.com, uh, resulting in some you know, celebration time for sure. Um, lots of memory reduction and CPU usage reduction as well. So that was a year long journey. Glad, glad that it's out there. We still have some uh, things that we need to wrap up, but um, yeah, that was huge for us. And then uh, jumping over to what went wrong this month. So um, there were some production issues that impacted our teams this month. Uh, they were unfortunate, but the response by the teams was great. And actually 
other teams helping throughout the uh, engineering organization was great. And also found that the RCA process, while nerve wracking, was very educational uh, and invaluable for team members to figure out how we can avoid it in the future, what we could have done better to avoid these, and just a learning opportunity for everyone involved. Cool. Uh, as a note, uh, particularly for development, uh, if we have code changes that are affecting production operational issues, I've asked that we start implementing RCAs on those. And that's just part of our continuous process. Please remember RCAs are a blameless process. It's not about uh, who did what wrong. It's about understanding what went wrong and how we don't repeat it. Um, that's the key aspect is we don't want to repeat previous uh, errors in uh, execution. Uh, so just think of it in those terms. Uh, great. Uh, next up, uh, we have a couple from uh, Quality and Kyle. Uh, go ahead, can you go ahead and give us an update there on things that we have seen problems and challenges with? Yeah. So the first one I would say is probably the big item from engineering productivity. <clears throat> um, in the last milestone transition, our triage automation created a lot of confusion, specifically related to removing deliverable labels for items that were in the expired release. We're looking to improve that in the issue that is linked here in the retro doc. Um, if you have feedback, please uh, comment there and we'll look to act on that as well. The next item that we have for entering productivity is review app success rate for the GitLab, um, GitLab project uh, decreased uh, quite significantly. Uh, we're currently looking into the, the root cause and how we can stabilize this a little bit more um, so that we can bump that back up and get, some, get, some, get the value that we were seeing out of review apps. Um, I'll vocalize Alberts here as well. Um, we have been seeing a number of master broken problems related to hard coded IDs in tests. Um, these usually pass locally, but they fail when uh, things run in a large orchestrated CI environment. Um, that's something that um, we're looking to add a um, add, add add code to actually detect in the MR um, and signal back to the developer to remove that. Over to Mech for the, the next one. Sure, thank you. Um, so we we made a made a mistake and caused a performance issue on com. Well, unintentionally uh, performance tested to GitLab at com while working on test data. Uh, this was unexpected. We also uncovered a Redis bug as part of this. Um, there's a mini um, RCA that we will create um, in the next following week. We think it has also been useful, but also it shouldn't have been um, unwarranted or. Um, people should be knowing that we are testing like com if you were to test. So we look to um, a report back with the results of the RCA, but also um, if it's useful, we may do some uh, performance or um, kind chaos testing with the knowledge of the infrastructure team on hand if you were to do something similar in the future. Um, to uh, you, Christopher. Nicholas. Thanks. Uh, yeah, Nicholas, I don't think is online, so I'll go ahead and verbalize his, which is uh, they shipped a bug that caused many critical issues all over the place. Um, or moreover, it happened close to the uh, milestone cut, so it caused some additional issues. Uh, one thing I'll look at is is uh, whether or not uh, we've we've done an RCA on that and follow up with Nick out of band on that aspect uh, uh, from that as uh, from from that uh, process perspective. Um, cool. Uh, next, we'll go to live discussions, and I think Craig and Stephen have the first one on process. Yeah, so um, I wrote up the summary and Stephen can give some details on what happened with his team here, but um, both the memory and the distribution team noted issues with the proper usage of the, uh, the deliverable labels. And for the memory team, it was the lack of actually applying them as we were going through and committing to our milestone. And it sounds like from the distribution side, they were removed late in the milestone, so they weren't counted in this retro when then we were listing deliverable ships. So from the memory team side, it's just discipline in our processes. I don't think there's any automation changes that we need to make now, but if it continues to be a problem for us, then we will look into ways to maybe just automatically adding the deliverable label when the milestone kicks off or anything that's in that milestone. And if Steven's on the call, I don't know if he has anything to add to this. Yes, sir, like I can just... A Okay. Yeah, just give a little uh, context on. We've been using the deliverable labels uh, for the past several releases to populate the board and use the workflow uh, that I believe Mac and his, his crew put together. It's been working great. We got kind of dependent on it. 
Um, and then we noticed when the milestone ended, we were we were expecting the, the process to, to start up and, and forward those and apply the proper mislabels and whatnot. Um, and so we happened to notice uh, during our next planning session that, that you know, uh, after the release ended that week, that things weren't being populated. And so um, we dug in a little bit, uh, DJ on my team filed an issue and it looked like maybe there's just a tweak to the logic that needs to happen to prevent that from happening in the future. So. That's that's us. Yeah, I guess one question there is uh, we've been noticing uh, some feedback from product management around the fact that not every change is deliverable. I want to guess consistent on that aspect of it because it is in our handbook. Um, one aspect that is there is, is the automation. And I've been debating back and forth of whether it's better to have uh, no automation. Uh, I know that sounds co contradictory, but like uh, from the perspective of it automatically does certain actions and it's on certain dates and it's a little bit hard time for teams to track from that aspect, or if we need to do better communication of how that automation works. Uh, so engineering managers kind of better understand the process. Um, it sounds like you're leaning more towards the latter solution uh, from that perspective. That yeah, we started right? out doing it all manually. In fact, we weren't even aware of the deliverable. When I joined last year, we started using a scheduled label, which had no automation around it. It was all on us to, to move things forward uh, or drop things out of a release. Um, and it worked reasonably well, but the, the big thing that we missed from it that I had seen in other tools uh, at other places was that ability to track like how many times something has slipped, things with a long tail. And that, that automated labeling really tells us like, okay, this, this hasn't just slipped one, this issue has slipped two or three releases. So let's go back and figure out, hey, is that issue just too big? Do we need to break it down? What's, what's, what's the problem with, with moving it forward? And so that's the part I think of the deliverable workflow that we really have used to, to help us understand what our, what our long tail items are. Okay, cool. That sounds like it definitely confirms my suspicion, which is I need to figure out how to better make sure that we communicate overall. And I'll work with Mech on that. Mech and uh, Kyle actually I should say, uh, th they're providing the mechanism, but I'll, I'll figure out how better to make sure that's kind of understood and then kind of work through the process there. Cool. Uh, Dan is not on the call. Uh, he, he mentioned that uh, uh, in Manage, they've received feedback, especially from New York Gap Labs, that the product development flow is not clear. Uh, we've heard uh, the art of labeling is rather mysterious, which labels to apply. So this is kind of similar. Uh, they're looking for comments and suggestions on how to improve uh, the flow. And Olivia, you have some feedback on that. Yeah, thanks. Um... I think this is joining the comment I made in the previous uh, development of this hour. I think this framework is really interesting and it tries to solve the same problem for every development teams at least because we all work with UX product management and try to achieve the same um, uh, delivery of features during the same cycle. So we're definitely facing the same issues and we're all trying to achieve, uh, to find a solution on our own. Um, so um, I will reiterate my, uh, the, the idea and the suggestion to maybe have a working group because we are all trying to solve that and this is definitely not efficient to me. Um, so I was just mentioning that in Secure, we did a round of experiments and clarifications because we also had some um, difficulties to clearly understand some part of the product development flow and be some different interpretation of the different stage. Uh, so um, yeah, just sharing that and we'll probably participate to the other issue, but I'm assuming that there are plenty of other issues from each team trying to improve things. So. This is why I'm suggesting a, maybe a working group on, on this. Yeah, that's a that's a, not a bad idea. Uh, let me take that under advisement. I'll, I'll try to figure out if that's something we can uh, uh, kick up uh, from that aspect. Uh, Dan, you have some additional commentary? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm assuming you mean me because there are multiple Dan's. So, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think I think what I've been trying to do here is optimize the 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 way we're working in terms of development and for the team and the way the team works and the code and all the other factors that we're considering, but then mapping that onto the correct labeling per the product development flow and making sure that it's clear that if you are wondering what's deliverable and sort of touches on the other issue that it's labeled with a deliverable. Um, uh, so I guess for me, the way I do this is part of the onboarding for the team of which labels happen when and, and defining the roles and responsibility. This is in the handbook page, by the way, defining those roles and responsibilities of when these things happen is described in that handbook page. So I can refer people to that pretty easily to say, 
okay, this is who's responsible for this leading up to this point, and then engineering is responsible, et cetera, for, for these things. Um, so I'm happy to participate. I, I'm certainly very interested if we want to start uh, do a working group or some other conversation about this. So I think this is something I'm pretty passionate about. Yeah, if uh, folks want to just uh, non-verbally add if they're interested in the group uh, to their, uh, that'd be good, uh, good, good place for me to uh, start to organize that. Uh, cool. Uh, thanks for that feedback. Um, Kyle, uh, you've got the last one for open discussion. For Remy. Yep. Yeah. So uh, in this one, this is related to master uh, stability, master pipeline stability. So we've actually already implemented uh, merge results pipelines and been seeing very positive results. Uh, we went from from having about three to five broken masters a week due to uh, stale MRs that merged in to we haven't seen any in the, the week that this has been on. So very promising early results. Um, but if there is any feedback, we did link to the issue um, that this was done in. Feel free to add it to that issue as well. Um, the intent here is that um, any pipeline that is run for a merge request that's not um, work in progress uh, will run rebased against current master. Um, so the SHAs may not match when you're looking at pipelines, but it does provide a uh, better feedback from um, the commits that are actually used to feed into the, the pipeline. Yeah, not not really any discussion since it's already done, I, um, I would say. Uh, so we're not, you know, if there is feedback, feel free to add it to the issue. So are we implementing merge trains for the major, the main uh, branch? Yeah, yep. So we are working towards it. Um, my apologies for leaving this out. It, it's kind of, in, this was an initiative that's really in parallel with performance optimizations in the pipeline. And once the um, GitLab pipeline is a little bit um, runs in a shorter duration, and we have we have some performance improvements there, we'll look to towards merge trains um, for the GitLab pipeline. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for that update, Kyle. Uh, does anybody have any feedback on that? All right, we'll keep moving. Uh, so last section that we'll verbalize is issues to track for the next retro. Uh, so uh, I have a number of these listed in here. Um, if anybody had any from the previous retros that they want to make sure are included, please add them to the bottom. Uh, we're trying to keep these down to uh, four to five, but we're right now at seven. That's okay, uh, as long as we're seeing progress uh, towards them. So uh, that's the key aspect. Uh, to call Can we jump out. over to number five? It's probably worth discussing here. Just sure. where, where should people, um, Dan, you want to verbalize? Yeah, I was just looking to where can I provide feedback on this, on the format we're using. Um, best place for that issue here, whatever people think. I think the best place is open an issue uh, when you want to do that and post it in the document. And then we have uh, people do that. And also, also advertise on uh, uh, development. Uh, is there a particular channel we should use for quality mech? Um, for the process of the retro? Yeah, just like to advertise like, uh, hey, we're asking, we're asking for feedback. So like I want to advertise in Slack channels. Yeah, so I, I think an issue in the, the hand project is, is suitable, but that's like how we're doing, how we're operating as a company, and then we can socialize it in Slack channels. And okay, so socialize at the Mac, and then he'll figure out which channels to socialize on for quality. Uh, and uh, I don't see Christy on, but I'll have to figure out, like we should probably get Christy Lenneville as well, uh, informed about it to give us feedback from uh, UX as well. Cool. Uh, are there any additional topics to cover in this retrospective? All right, everybody have a great remainder of their day uh, here at GitLab. Uh, thanks everybody.